The whole world of e-mountain biking can be a little confusing at times, especially when e-bikes get confused with e-mountain bikes. Then you've got watt hours, you've got newton meters, you've got torque, you've got battery sizes, geometry, in size, and it's definitely a confusing world. But not to worry, today I'll be guiding you through it. How do they work? Now that is a good question. Now, there's quite a few different types of e-mountain bikes available on the market right now, and the way they deliver that assist is gonna differ. Now first up, we have throttle style e-mountain bikes, which you simply twist a grip or push a lever to get that assistance from the motor, and you don't need to pedal. Then there is pedal assist bikes. Now you need to pedal these bikes to go anywhere. If you're not pedaling, you will not get assist from that motor. Then there is where the motors are located on the bike. You can get hub drive bikes, which have motors in the front or the rear wheel of the bike. And now these are more suited for commuting or basic trail use. Then you have the mid drive bike where the motor is located around the bottom bracket area of the bike. Now these are really well suited for off-road situations, giving a really well balanced uh, bike with the weight down nice and low. Really good for getting into that off-road action. Here on EMBN, we ride pedal assist e-mountain bikes, and they're pretty simple in their construction. There is a battery usually located on the down tube of different capacities. Now this drives the motor located down in the middle of the bike by the bottom bracket. There will be a display and of course a controller of the power where you can choose the different levels of assistance. Aren't they high maintenance? No, the motor and the battery are sealed systems, meaning they don't require any maintenance at all. The only items that will require maintenance are things like your gears, your drivetrain, and your suspension, much like a standard mountain bike. Surely they're heavy though, right? Well, no, not really, just a different kind of weight. In fact, Orbea's new e-mountain bike, the Rise, is 16 kilos for their flagship model. Now that isn't a lot different to a standard mountain bike. Just bear in mind, if you're gonna transport an e-mountain bike around, you're gonna to have to get a rack for the back of your car that mounts on the tow bar rather than the roof bars because you're gonna be over that weight limit. Most e-mountain bikes weigh in around 20 to 25 kilos and a standard mountain bike, that comes in at around 14 to 17 kilos. So not a huge difference there. How fast can you go? Well, that's up to you really. Once on a big hill in Shropshire, I achieved nearly 100 kilometers an hour on a standard mid-drive restricted e-bike. But the speed you're gonna get is gonna differ as to where you live in the world. Here in the UK and Europe, the e-bike is limited to 25 kilometers an hour. If you live in the US or Canada, that limit is raised slightly to 32 kilometers an hour. However, you can exceed that speed limit on human power alone, much like a standard bicycle. The motor will assist you to that speed, it cuts out, then it's up to you to provide that speed. You can get de-restricted e-bikes and bolt-on motor kits, which will give you crazy power and crazy speeds, but they can land you in a lot of hot water. Particularly if you de-restrict your e-bike, you can avoid your warranty, and it could land you with a huge fine and possibly put you in prison too. And the same for the uh, bolt-on motor kits. Great fun but you need to use them in the right places as they are highly illegal too. The great thing about a standard restricted mid-drive e-mountain bike is that you can ride it in the same places that you can a regular bicycle. Aren't they really expensive? Well, the answer is yes. Just like standard mountain bikes, they are expensive. So mid-drive hardtail, say a cube acid, it's gonna cost you around 1,600 pounds. Or a full suspension bike such as this high bike, about 2,500. If you wanna go full carbon with a large battery and lightweight, you're talking around 10,000 pounds. So yes, they are expensive, but they are super useful too. This bike can be a bike to suit every style of discipline out there. It can also be your commuter and it ticks a load of boxes. So yeah, price is relative, I suppose. Do I need a license? Well, in general, the answer is gonna be no, but this is gonna differ as to where you live in the world. So just make sure you check that one out before you commit to buying an e-mountain bike. Now, the great thing about riding a restricted e-mountain bike, much like this one, is that I can ride at the same places that I can a regular bike, be it on the road, in the woods, and to the trails. No license needed. 
You will, however, need a license if you want to ride one of those big, high-powered e-motos, the ones with foot pegs, twist throttle grips. They're going to need tax, insurance, and the whole shebang to keep those things legal. How old do I have to be? Well, you don't have to be old and crusty like Steve Jones. You can be young and athletic, much like myself. But all joking aside, we're seeing much more younger riders come into the sport. 20-somethings, 30-somethings are all on e-mountain bikes. But there is a minimum age in some countries. Here in the UK, you have to be 14 years old to ride an e-mountain bike, especially on the road. But that's going to differ as to where you live in the world, so be sure to check that one out. How long does the battery last? Well, that's a great question, and that's something you will come into tune with as soon as you get out and about exploring on your e-mountain bike, because there's so many different variables. And weight is one of them. A 90 kilo rider with a 700 watt hour battery can do about 5,000 feet of climbing and about 25 miles of range. However, a 50 to 60 kilo rider can pretty much do double that. Now, some brands such as Bosch have a range calculator. These are a really good way of working out that range before you hit the trails. And aren't there loads of different motors? Well, most mid-drive e-mountain bike motors kick out around 250 watts of nominal power, but that maximum power uh, output is going to differ across some of the motor models. But there's other things to consider before thinking about just the power. You have the lower power bikes, such as the Levo SL or the Orbea Rise, all sub 20 kilos with a smaller battery and a smaller motor. Then we have the middle ground bikes, bikes with motors such as the Bosch, Bros, Shimano, Panasonic and the Yamaha motors. These bikes have a higher torque output and they usually weigh in at around 20 to 25 kilos for those bikes. Then we have the heavy hitters such as the high bike Flyon, loads of power but a heavier weight bike. But the noise, the drag and the ride feel of these motors all differ from all these different manufacturers. So the best way to experience these is to get along to a demo day to find out which motor is suitable for you. And finally, before we head off... What about tuning? Leave it, it'll void your warranty. Full suspension or hardtail? Full suspension if you're riding off-road, hardtail if you're commuting or doing basic trails. Don't they make you unfit? Now that's absolute rubbish. You decide how hard or how easy you want to make that ride. So hopefully that's made things a little less confusing for you in the big wide world of e-mountain biking. But if there's still some unanswered questions or you're feeling a little bit confused, get involved in the comments box down below uh, and we'll help you out if you are stuck. Give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe to us here on EMBN and make sure you give us a find and a follow on your favorite social media too. Thanks for watching, guys.